Okie dokie, so it's 2023. Let's start by getting this tailgate finished now. I'm sure you're all really bored of it. Um, what I've done off camera is I've done a lot of work here, just getting everything restored, ready to go back on. Um, so the cover plate, number plate, bracket, um, all the bits and pieces, all the fixings, all the clips, they've all been cleaned up. Uh, we've ordered some new bits from Famous Four, so we've just got new like um, swing away number plate clips, hinge pins for the um, hinges, number plate swing away stuff, just loads and loads of bits and pieces. Um, and obviously then I've cleaned up all the other bits. So this was all original and it's all the original galvanization. Um, it was just had a little bit of overspray from black. So I've just been careful and I've just taken that back. Um, it's just a little bit shiny in some areas where I've gone a bit hard, but the galvanization is still there. Um, you know, it's, yeah, basically, let's just stick it all back together again. I'm going to film it in a different method today, um, so it'll stop me rambling on. Right, that's the tailgate finished now. About time, that only took us about three months. Um, right, so let's get on with the main task, which is the main thing, the Range Rover. Um, obviously, got another issue, because we always seem to get issues. It doesn't seem to be straightforward. Um, so in the past, uh, Barry replaced the goalpost. Uh, anybody doesn't know what the goalpost is, it's the whole rear frame of the car, basically, um, shaped like a goalpost. Anyway, he's replaced it with one from a later style Range Rover, which incorporates this. Let's try and get that torch on there. There you go. That incorporates this kind of locking latch striker assembly. Completely incorrect for an um, early Range Rover. I didn't realise that. I probably would have just stuck an early, a later uh, tailgate on if I'd known that. But yeah, so basically it means uh, you can't just interchange those. Um, you have to... I mean, this one here, for example. Let's try and show you. This one here is actually... Do you know what? I don't think I'll go into filming for a job. Uh, this one's actually a screw in, and the later ones are like a bar that bolts in from the back. So we've got a couple of options. Um, either we go back to a later tailgate, um, we replace the goalpost with an earlier set, or we find an earlier set and we just cut out the offending section, which shouldn't be too hard to do, and put that frame in. Now, I bet you're wondering, where am I going to get, sorry, let's put that torch there, where am I going to get a pair of goalposts for an early Range Rover? Um, and I was asking myself that, to be completely honest with you. Um, and then this accidentally turned up. There we go. So that's another Range Rover. This one is completely rotten, so this will be getting broken for parts. As you can see, I mean, it's so bad, even the chassis is basically, well, you can see the chassis is actually folding under its own weight under there it's completely toast um so i don't feel too bad about taking it apart um i won't show you the registration just because if someone does buy the shell and decides to restore it i don't want anyone to see what it used to look like but it's going to yield a lot of uh, useful parts for us um obviously we need uh for the other one i need the uh, rear section i want to rip out those bits on the goal posts um and then for the off-roader range road we're going to repanel that and paint that and we've got Great wings, great bonnet, good scuttle panel, really nice roof. Um, this quarter panel, sadly, was not me. I didn't damage that. But I will say the other side, let's go around there, is actually in really good condition, as you can see. So, yeah, don't feel uh, too bad about ripping this thing apart. Obviously, it's nice, got nice interior as well. Um, the doors are absolutely toast. You can see it's actually just fallen off here when they open the door. It's got a nice dashboard. Uh, so it's got everything we need for the other one. Um, but yeah, it is completely toast, this one. Um, yeah, so I don't feel bad about that. So what we're going to do now today is we're going to go back to this Range Rover and we're going to 
get on and we're going to start wire wheeling and stripping everything back. I've got all the panels on order for that. So I'll just pop it on a time lapse and then we'll come back later. Okay, so just to have a quick look at what we've done so far. So we've trimmed the bottom of the side panel because that was a bit rotten. Um, we've cleaned up the rear cross member. That's almost back to bare metal now. Um, and we've cut out the remaining rot on this side. So that wheel arch panel has been replaced at some point. You can see with the welds there. However, they are strong. They're not the neatest, but they're strong. But once we've wiped some seam sealer down there, you won't see that. But I've checked there's no holes there, so I'm pretty happy with that. We'll be pretty much replacing the entire panel down that side, uh, apart from maybe the last 20, 30 centimetres at the end, because there's nothing wrong with that area. Um, and I've already repaired that when I've uh, done the um, seal panel on that side. Uh, so, yeah, so that's how we're getting along with that at the moment. Going to have to obviously clean up all the chassis here and all that just to make it nice. Um, the next thing we're going to be looking at is replacing... Uh, well, basically trying to fix this issue where we got the wrong striker on the goalpost. Now, I was originally intending on removing the whole... Hang on, I'll tell you what we got outside. I was originally intending on removing the entire goalpost off of the other Range Rover. Um, but it, it, it's pretty rotten at the top, to be fair. Um, and since we've removed the quarter panel, it turns out there's been some accident damage which was covered by the quarter panel, a little bit of forklift damage, um, which has basically meant that, as you can see there, it's a little bit twisted. You can see down there how twisted it is. Um, you can see here, look, where it's pushed through and caused some major issues. However, it's not gonna be a massive problem for us. And there you go, you can see up there, the whole go goalpost is absolutely rotten at the top. So there's very little reason to replace the whole thing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this whole section here out, remove that, and we're gonna take this top skin off, straighten the back, um, and then we're gonna, so I don't know what we're gonna do as of yet, but we're probably gonna find a way that we can use the hardware from inside and swap it out for the one that's on the actual tailgate. And, you know, anyway, I'm gonna make some sort of Frankenstein, uh, but we won't be using this panel, the uh, outer skins you can see. It's buckled here and buckled there. The back is pushed in a bit, but it's pretty much straight. You can see, sorry, let me get in there. You can see that panel is pretty straight apart from where it's been pushed. So um, that makes me think that these, even though they look, this one looks a little bit bent, is probably actually straight with the actual back panel. So we should be able to make something out of the two of them. Hopefully that made sense, but I'm gonna remove that, clean that up, take that out of skin off, and then we'll step back and we'll have a look and see what we can do. Okay, so fast forward, I've removed the best bit of that rear goal post from the damaged side. Um, it had a little bit of a bend in it. However, I have straightened that out now. Um, yeah, pretty happy with that, to be honest with you. I've taken quite a lot of time measuring it, um, making sure I'm completely happy, finding various reference points on that panel that match the later goal posts. Um, so I've got it all marked out here. Always remember before you cut, always mark the line you're gonna cut because I was very close to cutting this line and then we would have had a bit of a disaster. Um, obviously measure everything as well. I've measured this multiple times, measured this multiple times. It's not gonna be perfect because um, it's a very awkward panel to cut unless you've got a circular saw that you go straight through it, but I don't have that. Um, roof has been braced, as you can see. Nice box of split pins there. Turned out to be just the right size to fit there. And again, I've measured that gap. So I've measured from the top of the goalpost to the very top of the cross member and that's 92.2 centimeters. So we've got a good reference point there in case anything moves. Obviously I have removed this part of the floor, which would probably keep it a little bit uh, more, less twisty, I guess, whatever. Probably probably should have welded that in first, but um, I'm in the mood to cut things out today. because I'd like to just get everything cut out, including this side, which I think is going to be just as bad as this side. So yeah, let's cut that out and uh, we'll see if that new panel fits in. Hopefully it just slots straight in. So I think we'll agree um, as a first cut, that's come out pretty well. Um, really happy with that. Obviously it still needs a bit of fettling before we get anywhere near welding that in. 
uh, we need to open up the joins a little bit. You can see it's a little bit too tight here. Um, but around there, that's pretty much what you'd want. You want to have about a mil gap at the top and the bottom of this panel. Uh, obviously, because when you weld it, metal expands and you can start buckling it. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with how that's come out, to be completely honest with you. Um, so I guess the next step is really going to be to open out those joins uh, and then put a couple of tack welds on. So it's going to be an interesting system, this. So we're going to have to put this in and tack weld it, do the other side, and then install the tailgate and make sure that that latches. Um, so I'm not sure what we'll do right now, but we'll probably just get that to a point where it could be tack welded in and then we'll get on the other side. Okay, so this is the stage right now. So this panel is completely tack welded in. Um, it's strong, it's not gonna go anywhere. I checked the measurements, nothing's moved, which is brilliant. As you can see, quite a nice fit. Took a little bit of fettling just to get it in there, but everything lines up exactly as it should do. Obviously, if I do decide I need to move it, the tack welds are easy enough just to run through with a one mil cutting disc and we can modify that any way we want to. So the stage we're at now is obviously that wheel arch has been cleaned. We cleaned up all of the uh, areas that any new panels will touch. The fuel tank, that's been cleaned. That's pretty much back to bare metal. That's gonna get primed and go to gloss black. Now it says made in Canada. There we go, for anyone interested. Um, all the chassis rails, now it doesn't look like it, but these have all been uh, scraped and wire wheeled. They're all back to bare metal. Let's put a torch on there for you. There you go. So all the chassis rails down this side and halfway across the back, that's in bare metal. Um, turns out it's got a stainless steel exhaust, which is really nice, quite happy with that. I still need to do this side. I'm half tempted to take the tank out because I'd really like to clean and paint that properly. Need to take that filler neck off anyway, because as you can see, the state of the connectors on everything, you know, those Jubilee clips, they're knackered. And we're also gonna be welding around there, so it makes sense just to remove it. But uh, yeah, that's as far as we've got in this episode. But as you can see, we've made quite a big amount of progress. So I'm pretty happy with that. On the next episode, we'll be tack welding the new panel in, priming and stone chipping the top of the chassis and cutting the other side out. And then doing the uh, same on this one that we've just done on the other side. But yeah, thanks for watching guys. Hopefully you've all enjoyed it and I'll put another episode out soon.